G'day Australia, good evening to our viewers on the internet and ni hao to our friends from China. Welcome to the Wealth Boomerang Show. Is this a show about money? Well, yes and no. The real question is, what is wealth? And what does wealth mean to you? For those who already have millions of dollars, you may desire additional time to spend with your loved ones. A sick millionaire may wish to give all their money for good health. Some people may want a deeper or more fulfilling spiritual connection. We believe that whatever you value is wealth to you. And we believe that whatever you send out will come back to you. Every week we speak to people on the show who have operated their wealth boomerangs correctly. They may have boomeranged back from tragedy to triumph or boomeranged back from rags to riches. Either way, their stories will touch, move and inspire you and instruct you along your journey. So sit back, relax and welcome. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Jeremy Ritten, and this is your Wealth Boomerang Show. Your head is there to dream your dreams. Your feet are there to follow through. Your heart is like a boomerang, boomerang. What you send out comes back to you. Look inside and you will find all your wealth inside of you. Wealth all starts inside your mind. Around 17 years ago, Jamie McIntyre was completely broke, in debt for $150,000, had no job and was sleeping on a friend's couch. Educated at a normal school, Jamie realised the world needed a 21st century education, one that taught street smarts rather than theory. Jamie found a way to learn 21st century style, and only five years later, after being bankrupt, Jamie had become a self-made millionaire. Jamie McIntyre is now the founder of 12 companies that turn over in excess of $40 million, with reach in industries such as education, trading, accounting, finance broking, stock broking, and financial services. 21st Century Group has grown to be the largest financial education resource in Australia. Jamie is living proof that it can be done, and he's here to show you that you can do it too. Welcome to the show, mate. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. So take us back. You were um, had, a, had a series of unfortunate events, business failure. You owed a lot of money. And how did you learn to dig yourself out of that pit? What strategies did you need to pick up? Yeah, I guess at age 21, I found myself sleeping on a friend's couch in uh, Sydney, actually. I grew up on a farm, northern New South Wales, and, uh, and headed off to the city. And uh, I'd started a business at a young age. I had no idea what I was doing, which sometimes I think is actually the key to success. You have to sometimes be naive enough to think you can do something. Um, but uh, I, I certainly wanted to be above average in life, and I wanted to do well financially. I'm not sure that was from watching uh, the show Dallas that used to be on TV, <laughs> um, or playing Monopoly and beating my brothers and sister. Um, but yeah, I'd found myself $150,000 in debt and facing bankruptcy through a business failure. I'd started a telecommunications company at a young age. And I guess it was that financial pain that, you know, I was either had to give up on my dreams. I guess in life we have two choices. Uh, our dreams are up here and our income's down here. When we start out in our working career, we either have to learn how to get our income up to be able to fund our lifestyle and our dreams, or most people, unfortunately, uh, lower their dreams and have what we call a settle for life. And that's mm. the decision I was facing. I thought, you know what? Uh, I, you know, I gave it everything I did, and I, I failed, and I did feel like a failure at the time. But the turning point was. Uh, I, f I decided to find myself a mentor, and I think when the student's ready, uh, the teacher appears, and that was one of the biggest turning points in my life. Mm -hmm. I imagine after your business failed and you're, you're over a hundred thousand dollars in in the red, and you're homeless, a lot of people would have said to you, "Hey." declare bankruptcy, go and get a job or go and get a degree or, you know, there would have been a lot of well-meaning people giving you advice. What made you take the unconventional approach? Well, you know, I think I'd already gone to university. You know, I, I dropped out of university after a year to study accountancy and it cost me a lot of money to do that. Um, and my choice was to go back to the farm where I grew up in northern New South Wales. But uh, I deliberately as a kid made sure I didn't learn how to uh, fix fences or shear sheep because I wanted to cut off that option because that would have been maybe a simpler option. Um, so I had no choice but to, to do something about it. And uh, I realized that when I went and looked for a me and a mentor, in other words, I realized that I wasn't taught at school how to manage money. I wasn't taught how to start a business. I wasn't taught how to invest. I wasn't taught any of these skill sets. And I thought, well, maybe if I could learn those things, that would help me succeed in life. And that's what I went and did. I found a mentor who'd already produced results, had taken you know, decades and decades of learning to, for him to become a very successful entrepreneur and investor. And I took that 
knowledge, I guess I copied to some degree, I modeled his success. Mm -hmm. And if there's a shortcut to success, I think that's what it is, is learn off others. And I squashed that into a few short years. And by applying that knowledge to my life when I was only in my early 20s, uh, I was able to drag myself off being almost bankrupt uh, to turning my career around. But uh, I grew up on a farm in the sense that I was taught, you know, you, you pay back the people you owe money, uh, you be your word. And, and I remember to this day, some people thought they were never gonna get paid back. And, and once I made some money back and I paid them back, they, they were so inspired. They thought we'd never hear from you again because in the city, a lot of people are not mm. always their word. Um, but the fact that I was, and I think that's important, is, is to do what it takes to, to honour your word. Mm -hmm. You learned some, some good morals and ethics and also learned some hard work ethic when you, were, when you were on the farm. How has that helped you with building your businesses? I think growing up on a farm was, I guess it's like an immigrant mentality where we had, were taught a very strong work ethic. Um, my dad also taught me to be entrepreneurial. So at, at 15, I was one of the richest kids at school because uh, he said that if you help you know, develop the farm and, and clear some of the paddocks, we can put a crop in and you can have one section of it if you do all the work. There's no guarantee that you'll make money because it could be a drought or the markets mightn't line up. So I started selling sweet turnips to the Brisbane markets as a 15 year old. I learned to hire my schoolmates. I learned to create a working environment that I could attract them to work without having to pay them too much money because I didn't have the money to pay them. Um, I learned all these leadership skills to create a, a team of people to do, develop this business. So even at, at, while I was at school, I was earning more money than school teachers. And that's when I first questioned, I said, mom, why do I have to go to school? It's costing me money. Uh, and I started to question the value of education at a very young age too. Mm -hmm. I guess you know, most of the school teachers haven't actually run businesses and things like that. So for, for the average person who's out there saying, look, I'd, I'd love to be independent, whether they want to be multi, multi-millionaire or whether they just want to call their own shots, uh, what would you suggest they do? Like rather than listening to their school teachers, just go and grab someone by the elbow and say, hey. Oh, well, uh, yeah, I said modeling, obviously mm. finding people that are successful that produced a result and that's the shortcut. Now, some people say it's all right for you. You had role models such as Richard Branson or, or you know, people like this. What can the average person do? Well, you can access all this information uh, online these days. You can Google, you can read books, you can get information, you can learn and study of successful people. Unfortunately, our education system at school does not pay a lot of attention to financial literacy and financial education. That's been a, a purpose of my life for the last 15 years to change that because it should. What I learned off my me and a mentor in my early 20s that transformed my life to be able to enable me from going bankrupt to or almost bankrupt to living uh, every dream I ever possibly imagined uh, was simply uh, because I learnt, uh, I could have learnt being taught those things at school. It was very common sense, strategic, intelligent strategies that anyone can learn and replicate as long as they're willing to work hard and having a good work ethic is critical. Fantastic. We're going to take a break and when we come back, I want to ask you a bit more about the strategies and also what your plan is for the future of education in Australia. Sure. Yeah.